Okay, so uh, just to finish off the material of Lecture 19, uh, first of all, here's a, a slide that I emailed around earlier, uh, just to remind you of this terminology that is quite useful to us about sequences that use upsets. So if you've got a sequence xn in a set x, we'll say it uses up x uh, if every element of x appears at least once in a sequence, which you could do in symbols this way. For every x in x, there should be there should exist an n in the natural number so that xn equals x. Um, I did insist the sequence is a subset of x. Um, you could probably make it even more general than that, but I think that would be going a step too far. Uh, right, so, so with that terminology, if you've got a non-empty set, you see it has to be a non-empty set or you can't find any sequences in it. Um, and then everything goes wrong. Uh, so if you've got a non-empty set, though, then a non-empty set is countable if and only if there's some sequence in the set which uses up x, uses up all the elements of x. And it doesn't seem to be standard, but uh, it's a useful term, so it'll save a bit of writing if we use that. Right, so the final result stated at the end of uh, the previous class, which we're just going to finish off now, is that a union of two countable sets is countable. And we're going to use the zipper system and sequences using up sets to do this one. So you've got two countable sets, A and B, and I want to prove that A union B is countable. And uh, from that you can, use, you can prove by induction, you can prove that union of three sets is countable, union of four countable sets is countable, and so on. Any finite union of finitely many, so any union of finitely many countable sets is still countable this way. But in fact it's true that you can take the union of a sequence of countable sets and still be countable, um, but you can't prove it this way by induction. And, uh, an exercise for you to figure out why not. Um, if you want to see why not, um, you can have a look at some of the examples on my uh, practice with definitions, proofs and examples sheet. Um, for example, a finite union of finite sets is finite, but a union of a sequence of finite sets doesn't have to be finite. And a finite union of bounded sets is bounded, but a union of a sequence of bounded sets doesn't have to be bounded. So usually things can change when you go to the union of a sequence. But not when it comes to countability, it turns out, but you need a different proof. Okay, but we'll just do the proof of two for now, and we'll come back later to do the union of a whole sequence of them. So I want to prove that the union of A and B is countable. Well, you have to get rid of the annoying special case where one or both of them is empty. But if either of them is empty, then the union is just the same as the other one, so it's countable. So, so unfortunately, it's possible that A or B is empty. If A or B is empty, then A union B is A or is B, so it's countable. You have to eliminate that annoying special case first. Um, but it's a very trivial special case. Okay, otherwise... Otherwise, A and B are non-empty and countable. So they might be finite and non-empty, or they might be infinite but countably infinite. Either way, they've each got a sequence using them up. But we'll need a different notation for each because they're different sets. So then, there is a sequence a n in A, using up A, So every element of A appears at least once in that sequence and a sequence Bn in B using up B and so every element of B appears at least once in that sequence. Now we need a sequence using up the whole of the union of A and B and just as with Z 
We mustn't do all the A's first or we'll never get to the B's. We mustn't do all the B's first or we'll never get to the A's. We need to treat the two traffic streams equally, use the zipper system, um, and this is very like what we did with Z, the sequence A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, and so on. I would say that's enough. As long as I know exactly what your sequence is, um, there shouldn't be any doubts left as to what the most obvious sequence is. So you can see what that one is. Um, that um, is a sequence in A union B, which uses up the whole of A union B. So it uses up A, A union B. Because anything that's in the union, anything that's in the union is either in A or in B. If it's in A, then it's one of the A's, and it turns up in one of the odd terms. And if it's in B, then it's, uh, if it's in B, then it's one of these B's in the sequence, and it turns up in one of the even terms. So there you are. Um, and that proves the theorem. So A and B is countable. And that proof turned up in the exam two years ago. Um, so, you know, some of these bookwork proofs do turn up exactly as they are. Sometimes they turn up um, with a slight variant. You never know which things are going to turn up, unfortunately. But uh, the trick is to try to understand them all. Right, okay, so that finishes the Lecture 19 material, and I'll stop the recording of that. Uh, oh, but first I'll ask if there's any questions on that proof. <coughs>